All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my how and why for sourcing tonic herbs and teas and share some of my mindset, some of my approach, some of my sort of behind the scenes type of thoughts. This video is a little bit different because for one, I'm doing it live and it's like 7 a.m. here and I this is the first <laughs> that I've spoken. I just got up like an hour ago. Uh, but it's just a bit easier and more efficient for me to just go live and do this rather than having to do the whole filming, editing, rendering, processing, uploading type situation. So my how and why and some of my process, basically my main and <laughs> biggest driving factor is basically self-interest in the sense that I get interested in something, I get passionate about something and something that is going to help me achieve a goal or move towards something that I want and then I'll get really into it, learn a lot about it and then eventually then I might end up selling it because I know it, I understand it, I understand what it can do, what it can't do and I've gone through a long lengthy learning process to actually understand what it is and understand the actual quality basis of that thing. Whether that is agarwood, sandalwood, tea, tonic herbs, internal arts, music, etc. That's just sort of a process that um, I usually go through. And really, at least for herbs, it started with, you know, boiling them up raw and really being obsessed with reishi mushroom and reading about it mostly all day, every day, and being really, really, really obsessed. So getting to my actual principles, the obviously the first underlying driving factor is my own passion, my own dedication, my own pursuit of more knowledge and more growth and more better health and uh, that type of situation. <laughs> so one of my other underlying things is trying to understand the whole process, meaning from point A to point C. So the actual raw herb, what it is, how it's grown, how it's harvested, how it's extracted, and then how it actually ends up when you actually take it. And I, within that process, I have usually a kind of a testing formula that I'll go through. So what I'll usually do if I'm going to launch a new product is I'll take it myself on a regular basis from anywhere from three to 12 months, depending on the product. And then within that time frame, I'll usually give it to about 10 of my friends, but I won't really tell them much about it. I won't give them any suggestions about the benefits or what they might notice or what they might see, but I'll just give it to them and say, take it, tell them how to take it, and then they'll report back to me their experience. So from that basis, once I have my own experience from three to 12 months or more, and then I have you know, 10 people or so of experience and then I can corroborate all that together with what is claimed about it and then I actually have a pretty under a pretty good understanding of what it might do and if it's actually something good enough or something that I might actually want to sell because generally what happens is I take it it's awesome I'm excited about it and then I give it to like 10 of my friends they're also like this is really good this is awesome like can I get more so then I'm like okay this is actually a good thing and some people uh, go to a really other extreme, which is they get real techno about it. They get real lab junkies about it, or they're like really boast about all of this lab testing and research type stuff that they're doing, which is obviously important, which is something that I do at multiple stages for everything that I sell and produce, meaning testing the raw herbs, testing prior to extraction, testing after extraction, and then testing prior to packaging, testing after packaging to make sure there's no contamination, to make sure that there is uh, the potency that we're looking for and the purity that we're looking for. But you can go really, really far and extreme with that. So I've, I've had herbs and samples of things that technologically <laughs> on, on the lab spec sheet should be phenomenal but I take them and I don't feel anything, I don't really notice anything, and they just feel kind of dead. But mentally, they sound cool because they have X, Y, and Z percentages of different things. So that's why I don't really go so far in that direction. Plus, I also don't really believe in it past a certain point 
because past a certain point, we're just talking about modern pharmaceutical medicine. Because, for example, reishi has hundreds of active chemicals. But what people will do is be like, oh, well, you just need the polysaccharides and the triterpenes. That's all you need. Those are the, the good ones. It's like, well, those are just a small fraction of what's really going on. So if you really believe that, then why not just get a 50% polysaccharide extraction, which some people actually do. But to me, it really makes no sense. And if you're going to do that, just take pharmaceuticals. Like save yourself the time and the energy and the hassle of messing with herbs and just go to pharmaceuticals if, that, if that's what your belief system is. And if your faith and understanding in plants is that small, then why are you even in this arena? So that's just a personal bias for me where I try to find a balance between those worlds. And in essence, basically having a, a product like a powdered extract that is like the actual raw herb, which is generally good, but it's just more potent, <laughs> easier to use, more efficient, more absorbable, and just easier all around, and generally more economical also, than the actual raw material. But not so far to an extreme to where it sounds cool on paper, or I get all techno about it, or where it just basically doesn't really resemble or have the vibe of the raw herb. Because for me, um, I actually know the vibes or the, the feeling qualities and the various qualitative aspects of the raw materials in the various spectrums of qualities that they can manifest, uh, meaning poor quality, decent, good, amazing, supreme, all that, knowing that spectrum and then knowing that spectrum and then knowing what the extract should be. So it's basically having this full big picture and understanding it and try to balance these things in a way where it is very potent, very effective, and also accessible and economical for people. Uh, because for, for me, I take basically everything that I sell, maybe not on a regular basis, but I have taken it in large amounts in the past. So like something like Makuna, I don't really take anymore and I haven't for years, but definitely from 2010 through 2012, I was very into it, but you know, but definitely Chaga, Reishi, Cordyceps, Lion's Mane, Gynostemma, the Rosebuds, the Chrysanthemums, those are like heavy hitters for me on a, all the time, plus the teas, the Agrawood, the Incense, and many other things. So that's basically a lot of my how and why and my underlying kind of thought process. And it's just generally coming out of my obsession and dedication for these things. And that I really only consume what I sell. <laughs> and if I wouldn't consume it, then I wouldn't sell it. Like I, if I wouldn't feel good taking it myself or giving it to someone that I care about, then I'm not really gonna sell it or really recommend it because that just doesn't really make that much sense to me. Um, and that's just sort of my bias um, in terms of, you know, how I orchestrate things. So I think that's mostly what I wanted to say. I covered sort of my driving self-interest, understanding the whole process from growing the raw herb to where and how to harvesting, which is where and how to the extraction process, and then down to the the powdered extract itself or the liquid extract depending on what it is um, so there's another thing that I that I could talk about which is this uh, whole basis of DDAO which certain people have trademarked and copyrighted and then other people have copied off of them but in reality that concept is just straight from traditional Chinese herbology and it is actually just common sense that if you're going to grow astragalus, you're going to grow hushawu, it should be in these provinces because that's bet the best. It's just sort of understood. It's not really that crazy of a thing. Like for all of my herbs, that's just implicit because to me, that's just what you do if you're going to have something that's good and authentic. So 
this is kind of implicit. Um, so it's like saying, we have hot water extracts that are extracted with hot water. It's like, isn't that implied in the hot water extract that would be extracted with hot water? Uh, anyways, looks like there is a question. Uh, do you have any sinking shung left? Yeah, I have 15 ounces of it left. And um, yeah, so that's all I have left. So you can email if you want to order more or you can wait a couple of weeks and it'll be up on the website. But I'll be out of town for a little bit so I won't be able to, I mean, I have it boxed up next to me. I just forgot to print the uh, shipping label, which actually I might be able to do. <laughs> Um, today so I can get that shipped out to my warehouse but uh, yeah I definitely have like 15 bags left and that is all so anyways uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about my how and why for sourcing herbs and give a little bit more background and context for why I do what I do and some of the how and some of the extensive multi-faceted testing processes that things are able to go through. Uh, if I were emailed today, would you be able to send it to me? No, uh, because I'm gonna be getting on a plane in a couple of hours, so I won't be home for like five days, so I won't be able to ship it um, because it's already all boxed up and everything. So, and I gotta get on a plane and I gotta eat breakfast soon, so I don't have a ton of time but uh, yeah, so that's it uh, for this video. <laughs> I just wanted to experiment with doing it live instead of the whole recorded thing. Um, because people often ask about my recording process as well. And honestly, 99% of my videos are just done in one take. We usually without an outline or I'll have an outline in my head, but I'll just sort of do it and then that's it. I don't really do much editing because honestly I don't like being on the computer <laughs> uh, and I don't yeah I just don't enjoy being on the computer anymore so I try to minimize it as much as I can so to me being on the computer for four hours editing and rendering video is just not enjoyable like when I had filmed my video when I filmed my courses for Udemy filming it was great it was fun but then being on the computer for four to six hours editing and rendering two hours of footage was just like really unbearable <laughs> uh, so yeah this streaming works pretty well actually so anyways hopefully this has been helpful and enjoyable and useful in some capacity it's like 7 20 or 30 a.m. here so I'm gonna go get some breakfast and uh, go to the airport so I will talk to you soon. I gotta figure out how to end this live stream, man.